Kwa Atta, burning with envy and greed, turned down the gold offered by his friend Dapa. Fueled by jealousy, he ventured into the forest, gun in hand, feigning being lost, all to encounter the dwarves who had enriched Dapa. For three days, he wandered the forest, always ending up near his home, yet he stubbornly pretended not to recognize the way, determined to play the part of a lost hunter. His actions were driven by a deep-seated desire to outdo his friend, to claim more wealth for himself. Each time he reached the familiar path leading home, his greed urged him to turn back, to dive deeper into the forest's shadows, chasing the chance to meet the mystical dwarves. Kwa Atta's journey was marked by an unsettling blend of determination and deceit as he navigated the eerie, whispering woods, his heart set on the goal that he believed would prove his superiority over Dapa. Kwa Atta's mission was both frightening and driven by greed. His intense desire for the dwarves' gold pushed him forward, and after many tries, he finally reached the large tree where Dapa had his encounter. Wow, this is amazing, Kwa Atta whispered, planning to hide until the dwarves showed up. He concealed himself behind the tree, eagerly awaiting their arrival. Soon, a strong wind, known in Ghana as Motiam Frama, began to howl, signaling the dwarves' approach, as they are often associated with such winds. Kwa Atta's heart raced with anticipation and greed, then, just as he had heard in the tales, a broom appeared from the tree, sweeping the ground on its own. Kwa Atta's eyes widened in amazement and greed. He was close to achieving his goal. The wind's howl and the self-moving broom created a spooky atmosphere, fueling Kwa Atta's obsession with the gold he was about to claim. His greed had led him to this eerie, magical moment in the forest, alone, and fixated on the wealth he believed was within his grasp. Kwata was too greedy to wait patiently. He couldn't just watch the broom sweep by itself. He wanted the gold right away. So he grabbed the broom and began sweeping the ground himself, driven by his impatient desire for wealth. Once he finished sweeping, he eagerly anticipated what would happen next just like his friend Dapa had described. Soon, chairs began to float down from the tree, settling onto the forest floor. Kwa Atta didn't waste a moment. He dashed to the scene and quickly claimed one of the most splendid chairs for himself, sitting down to wait for the dwarves. His actions were hasty and driven by a deep hunger for wealth, not caring for the natural order of the mystical events unfolding around him. His heart pounded with excitement and greed as he sat among the descending chairs, his eyes scanning the surroundings for the first glimpse of the dwarves. Kwa Atta's envy and desire for quick riches made him bold, ignoring the eerie and unnatural atmosphere as he positioned himself at the center of the impending magical encounter. Kwa Atta, seated among the magical chairs, watched as the dwarves materialized before him. His eyes, filled with greed, showed no fear at the sight of these mystical beings. Unlike the respectful dwarves who stood in honor of their assembly, Kwa Atta remained seated, his mind fixated on the treasure he coveted. His obsession with gold made him bold and careless, ignoring the traditional respect due in the presence of such creatures and their king. As the meeting of the dwarves proceeded, Kwa Atta sat unnoticed, or so it seemed. The dwarves, engrossed in their discussion, gave no outward sign of acknowledging the greedy man among them. Once their gathering concluded, they prepared to leave, and panic gripped Kwa Atta's heart. Fearful of losing his chance at wealth, he sprang to his feet, breaking the silence with a loud, demanding voice. He challenged the Dwarf King, accusing him of ignoring the human scent in their midst. Hey, King of Dwarves, so you are leaving? Are you pretending you can't smell a human among you? Kwa Atta cried out, 
his voice echoing through the forest clearing. My name is Kwa Atta. I'm a human, and I reek of the human world. You must acknowledge my presence. His words, steeped in desperation and greed, shattered the mystical calm of the gathering. Kwa Atta's audacious outburst reflected not only his deep-seated envy and greed, but also his disregard for the customs and dignity of the dwarves assembly. His selfish desire for wealth and status overwhelmed any sense of respect or fear, driving him to confront the dwarf king and demand recognition, laying bare his true character in the face of the ancient and mysterious powers of the forest. The dwarves, curious and puzzled, asked Kwa Atta, Odasani, human, what brought you here? In response, Kwa Atta, with a loud and demanding voice, claimed, I'm a hunter, and I've lost my way in this forest, just like my friend Dapa did before. His words were filled with a mix of arrogance and deceit as he tried to manipulate the situation to his advantage. The Dwarf King, intrigued, prompted Kwa Atta to state his desire. Tell me what you seek, and I shall grant it. Seizing the opportunity, Kwa Atta handed over a large sack to the king, his eyes gleaming with greed. You know what I want, he said boldly. Fill this sack with gold, just as you did for Dapa. But remember, I am older than him, so I deserve more. His demand was steeped in envy and greed as he sought to outdo his friend's fortune. Kwa Atta's audacity was clear, showing no humility or respect for the mystical process or the dwarves' traditions. His sole focus was on surpassing Dapa, driven by a deep-seated jealousy and a desire to claim a greater share of the treasure, regardless of the means or consequences. The dwarf king, with a wave of his hand, unleashed his magic, causing the sack to swell enormously before passing it to Kwa Atta. He issued a stern warning. Do not open this sack until the next morning, or you may not receive what you desire. Kwa Atta, with a dismissive smirk, assured him. Don't worry, I'm no child. I can manage this. As Kwa Atta made his way through the forest, clutching the bulky sack, greed whispered dark thoughts into his ear. This sack must be brimming with gold, he mused, his mind swirling with avarice. Why should I take all this treasure home now? I'll just open it, stash some gold in the bush, and take a little home. That way, whenever I need money, I can simply come back here and grab what I need. His laughter echoed through the trees, a sound filled with cunning and self-satisfaction. Kwaata's thoughts spiraled further into greed. Now, I'm surely wealthier than Dapa, he gloated internally, the thought of his newfound riches overshadowing their friendship. We are no longer equals. I have surpassed him. Kwaata, driven by greed, eagerly untied the sack anticipating the sight of shining gold. But as he peered inside, he was met with an unexpected darkness, so deep that he couldn't see anything. A wave of dizziness hit him, the blackness inside the sack seeming to swirl and consume. The gold must be hidden beneath this darkness, he thought, convinced of his fortune lying just out of sight. With greed guiding his actions, Kwa Atta plunged his hand into the abyss of the sack, expecting to grasp handfuls of gold. Yet his fingers closed on nothing but the chilling emptiness. Panic set in when he tried to withdraw his hand, only to find it trapped, as if the darkness had come alive, clutching him back. Fear crept up his spine, the realization dawning that the sack held no treasure, but rather a sinister trap sprung from his own greed. The more he struggled, the more he felt ensnared, a prisoner to his own avarice, in a situation that turned from eagerly anticipated wealth to a terrifying struggle for freedom. 
Kwa Atta wrestled to free his hand from the sack for hours, his cries of, Leave me, let go of my hand, please, echoing through the forest. But it was useless. Exhausted and terrified, he had no choice but to head home, his hand still caught in the clutches of the sack. When he reached his village, his shouts of, Help me, please, drew a crowd. People rushed to assist some grabbing the sack, others pulling Kwa Atta's body in a desperate tug of war, trying to release him from the sack's grip, but they couldn't free him. His pleas turned to cries, and the air filled with the tension of his plight. The once greedy man, now trapped by his own desires, became a spectacle of struggle and fear. The community's efforts to help were met with the sack's unyielding hold, a stark reminder of Kwa Atta's greed and the dark consequences it brought. His once strong and cunning figure was reduced to one of despair and helplessness, ensnared by the very greed that had driven him to this fate. In a desperate bid to free Kwa Atta, the villagers attempted to slice through the sack, but the dwarf's magic rendered their efforts futile. The sack remained intact, as impenetrable as the greed that had led Kwa Atta to this predicament. Drained of strength and overwhelmed by his ordeal, Kwa Atta was taken to the chief's palace, a shadow of his former self. There, in front of the chief and the gathered villagers, Kwa Atta recounted his tale, a story marred by greed and envy. As the truth unfolded, the crowd erupted, accusing him of excessive greed. Faced with the unyielding grip of the sack, Kwa Atta, in despair, begged the chief to amputate his hand, believing that losing a limb was the only escape from his greed-induced bondage. Reluctantly, the chief agreed, and Kwa Atta's hand was severed, releasing him from the physical trap, but not from the weight of his actions. This grim solution marked the end of Kwa Atta's quest for wealth, a journey that cost him not just his hand, but also his dignity and the respect of his community. The tale of Kwa Atta serves as a stark warning about the dangers of letting greed and jealousy override moral judgment and human decency. It illustrates how these destructive feelings can lead to dire consequences, binding individuals in a metaphorical sack of their own making, from which escape comes at a great cost. Kwa Atta's story is a moral lesson on the importance of contentment, humility, and the risks of succumbing to the lure of wealth and envy. It reminds us that the pursuit of material gain, driven by greed, can lead to irreversible losses far greater than the wealth one hopes to accumulate. This story, rich in moral and cultural significance, was originally told by the late Nana Kwame Ampadu, a legendary Ghanaian musician and composer renowned for his extensive contribution to high-life music. With over 800 songs to his credit, Nana Ampadu has left an indelible mark on Ghanaian music history. Among his vast repertoire is the song Kwa Atta, from which this story is derived. Nana Ampadu, often hailed as the king of Ghana's music, was not only the lead singer and chief songwriter, but also the founder of the African Brothers Band. His work transcended the realm of entertainment to impart valuable life lessons, as evidenced by this story. We are honored to share this tale with you, keeping alive the legacy of Nana Kwame Ampadu, a true icon of Ghanaian music and storytelling, as we celebrate his artistry and the rich cultural heritage he represented, we invite you to engage with this story and carry forward its timeless message. Please tell us where you're watching from. Show your love for these timeless stories by liking, sharing and subscribing to our channel. Your support helps keep the legacy of great artists like Nana Ampadu alive and cherished in the hearts of people around the world.